Hey guys, how's it going? Um, so yeah, in this video we're going to look at uh, downloading the bearing models um, and importing them uh, into SOLIDWORKS. So basically we've got two ball bearings, oh, sorry, we've got four ball bearings, two different types. So we've got this large uh, thin section bearing here uh, on the right, on like the, the, the larger um, top joint, which looks like this. And then on the other end, we've got these little smaller ones, um, which look like this. So um, all these bearings, um, we can take a quick section view inside. You can see they've actually got these little balls. Um, if I move this way, like that. Uh, set the inner race. So you got the inner race, um, which is this inner cylinder. You got the ball bearings, and you got the outer race. And the inner race um, rotates um, with very low friction. Um, if the outer race is fixed in place. So yeah, that's uh, a ball bearing. Um, all right, so I guess quickly, um, if I isolate these two, um, let's just have a look. Here we go, so these are the two different sizes. Uh, so basically what we've got here, uh, this one is a 63800-2 RS1. Um, so that's the bearing ID, so every bearing has a different uh, sort of standard um, ID. Uh, so if you buy a 63800 bearing from SKF, NSK, uh, any metro, any, um, any bearing uh, manufacturer, they should all be to the same uh, dimensions if you buy the same series. Um, cool, so this one has an outside diameter of 19 millimeters and inside diameter of 10 millimeters and a width of seven. Um, so basically the uh, number here, so each sort of digit uh, in this ID uh, has like a meaning. Um, so what I've done, um, I'll link this in the description, but basically um, there's a, a good website that tells you on the SKF website what all the different parts of the um, bearing designation um, mean. So um, basically the six is the bearing type. Um, so in this case, six means deep groove single row ball bearing. Um, 3800 relates to the ISO um, sort of size uh, geometry standard, I believe. So the 3800 uh, will relate to the ratios between the outside, inside diameters and the width. And the two RS1 means that there's, um, RS1 is rubber seal type one, and two uh, means there's two of them, one on each side. Um, so if I look at this bearing, we can see there's this black rubber seal. Um, and we always like to buy um, sealed bearings because obviously the rover is in an outdoor environment. Um, if you get dust and gravel and dirt and water inside of the bearings, it's not going to it's not going to last very long. And um, yeah, it won't run smoothly if you get that sort of stuff inside of them. So we always buy sealed bearings. Um, you can get ones that have metal seals, uh, metal shielding, um, but they're usually a little more expensive. But they sort of serve the same purpose, keeps the grease in. So. Ooh, this bearing here, so this one here is a, I think it's a 61810-2 um, RS1. Um, so this is a special, it's called a thin section bearing, um, just because the ratio between the inside diameter and the outside diameter results in a fairly thin um, section, relatively speaking. Um, so yeah, this one is an OD of I think it's 65, an ID of 50, and a width of 7. Uh, cool. So that's the two different types of bearings. So what we could do, we could model these bearings um, with a revolve really quickly. But you can buy these bearings off the shelf. And generally speaking, uh, if you can buy a part, um, someone's made a card model for it somewhere, and it's going to be quicker to download their model rather than draw your own. And in this case, it's going to be more detailed. Um, so, as you can see, these bearing models are actually highly detailed. We've got, um, which, which can be good and bad. Sometimes you don't want a super detailed model, 
um, especially if you're trying to reduce like uh, compute time. Um, but in this case, the bearing models, although reasonably detailed with all the ball bearings in sight, um, they're still relatively simple. Um, so you can see they've actually got all the elements inside them as well, which is really cool. So where do we get these bearings from? Um, so basically, I'll bring up a link here. I'll add it in the um, in the video description as well. But basically, you just go to skf.com. Um, we'll scroll down. We'll click on the rolling bearings button, um, and then basically you've got all different types of bearings here. Um, typically. We use deep groove ball bearings, they're the most standard ones. Um, thrust bearings are also handy occasionally, but um, yeah, you've got all the options here anyway. These thin section ones down here are actually extremely thin, extremely specialized. Uh, all the bearings that we use are within this deep groove ball bearings um, range. So we can click on this. Cool, and then in here we've got like a lookup table. So we can, so if I were to, originally I was making this part, I'd just drawn the shaft, it was 10 millimeters in diameter. I'd go in here, um, bore relates to the inside diameter ID, same thing as bore diameter. So I'd come in here, I'd type in 10 millimeters is the bearing that I'm looking for. And I click apply. You can see it's found out all of our 10 millimeter um, bore bearings or 10 millimeter ID. Uh, cool. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to sort this one here to ascending order or de descending ascending order. Um, so we can see we can come down here, we got some that are 15 millimeters. Um, so I probably would have come down here and go, nah. Um, you know, you got the load ratings here as well. Um, and some of the other sort of speed limitations and that sort of thing. Uh, but yeah, so the one we were after that we could buy locally was the 63800 um, series bearing, which was the, um, the 10 by 19 by seven. Uh, so you can see here we've got 63800-2 RS1. So the 2Z, that's a metal shielded variant. Um, we've got the, uh, let's have a look. I believe the R here is means it's flanged. So we don't want a flanged bearing. We've just got like a normal unflanged bearing. So I believe this is the one we're after. But yeah, uh, the great thing about the SKF website, we can just click on this bearing here brings up a great page um, with all of these dimensions, which is awesome. Um, this particular lot of dimensions here is really cool. Um, it gives you the inner race and the outer race sizes, which indicates sort of how large your shafts can be um, and how, um, so you've got the abutment dimensions here as well. So um, sometimes when you're making shafts and stuff, you you want to make sure that the spinning part is only contacting the inner race and not the outer race, for example. So you've got all the dimensions here to be able to work that out. Um, but yeah, the best thing about this is if you scroll down to the bottom, you can uh, find the CAD models. So we'll just wait for it to load. You can see there's a little preview there and click this button here. And then we go down to SOLIDWORKS, in this case, greater than 2006. We click on the CAD download button. So we'll just wait for that to download for us. You can see we've got a zip down here. We'll just open this up in the folder. And then we can, let's extract this here. Let's go back to it there. Here we go. So we'll open up the folder, SOLIDWORKS. Cool, so when you download bearings from SKF, you actually get an assembly here. So we can open this assembly, but what we're going to do, we're going to convert this assembly into a single part, which is super important. Um, because if we keep the bearing as an assembly, then it's actually, it's annoying because that means everywhere you want to place the bearing, you have to put four parts in that folder. And if you lose track of any of those parts, then the assembly won't open. So what we're going to do, we're going to convert this uh, assembly into a single part. So you can see the assembly here is made up of a heap of different parts. Each one of those would be a ball or a, or a seal or something like that. And what we can do, so we've brought in the part, we go file up here, save as. Then we're gonna to go to our folder where we're gonna be collecting all of our parts between the different videos. Um, so main, suspension, upper link. Now, save as type, so instead of assembly here, we're going to go save as SOLIDWORKS part. This is the neat thing you can do. You can save an assembly as a part. And then we're going to save all components here. Um, you can 
just choose to save the exterior faces and stuff like that. We're going to save all components. And I'm going to rename this part just while we're here. I'm going to rename it to uh, our part numbering. So I'm going to go chassis 210201 underscore 02. Second part in this subassembly. And then I'll keep the bearing um, code after that there. I believe the W at the start just means stainless steel as well. So we'll save that there as a single part. And we'll click OK. And we'll just check that we can open that part. Um, so we don't need to save this initial assembly. Um, uh, but what we can do, we can go open. And we can see here that we've got a SOLIDWORKS part now um, that we just created. And here it is. So it's converted all the different parts into solids. And now this part this whole bearing is just a single part, which is really cool. So there we go, we got our bearing model uh, for the small one. Uh, so I'll just close that now. And then for the large one, we got a 61810. So I'm gonna go it's back to the SKF website. I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna go to, I'm just gonna do a search here, 61810. So if you know what bearing you're after, you can just search for it. Um, and then we'll go here, we'll see, okay, there's a, a non-shielded one. Uh, and then we've got this one, the 2RS1 shielded, um, sealed rather, with uh, the rubber seals. These little black um, rubber seals you can see here. Uh, so we're going to scroll down again, we've got all of this information. Um, and then we're going to click on this button once the CAD loads up. We'll click here. And we'll go SOLIDWORKS, CAD download, like this. Let's wait for it to download for us. Cool. And then we'll open this zip up. So we we'll extract files. We'll open the assembly. Cool, there it is. And then we'll do a file save as. We'll go to our folder where we're collecting all the parts. Suspension, upper link, and then we're going to save as a SOLIDWORKS part, not a SOLIDWORKS assembly. We're going to save it as a SOLIDWORKS part. And we're going to save it as 03. And we're going to save it as 61810 underscore 2RS1, which is the bearing type. All components, save. Um, I guess overriding it, that's frustrating. Um, something like that, save, okay. Cool, and then we've got both our bearing models. Brilliant. So that's how we download the two bearings. Um, again, just to reiterate, if you can, um, if you can buy a part, you can usually download a model for it. Um, and the SKF website is a great place. They got a huge, um, huge range of CAD models. Um, so I'll link uh, to the SKF website in the description, so you guys can find all those. Um, but yes, yeah, so that's basically the process for downloading the bearing models.